not merely an ignorant idealist, but an anarchistic enemy of the nation, capable of thought, cannot see the agnonymy. Get me Landers. Did you see it? It's libel. I'm gonna sue the Chicago Tribune for a million dollars. On this day in 1919, the whole world was watching to see if Henry Ford could prove that his success was not by chance. The only question was, would he succeed? Mr. Ford, is today the day? How does it feel to be the voice of the common man? Mr. Ford, who do you win? Your Honor, since the case for libel rests on the determination as to whether what the Chicago Tribune printed was true or not, defense would like to call Henry Ford to the stand for a demonstration as to whether or not he is an ignorant man. Very well, Mr. Ford, you will take the stand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Mr. Ford, I'm going to ask you a few simple questions to determine whether or not you're an ignorant man. How much schooling do you have? I went to grammar school to the age of 16 when I quit to become a mechanic in a machine shop. That turned out to be a considerably more useful education for the work I would become famous for. Can you tell me how many soldiers the British sent to America to put down the rebellion of 1776? Well, I don't know the exact amount, but I heard it was considerably larger than ever went back. <laughs> Who was Secretary of State under James Madison? I myself was not alive in 1811. <laughs> and even if I was, I don't see how that particular tidbit would help me run my business. How many people in this courtroom know the answer Your Honor, to that question? Your Honor, I object. The witness is not permitted to question the public. Nobody? Doesn't surprise me. And how many of you good people got a college education? Your Honor. I suggest you try to get your money back on that, since the Chicago Tribune could write that you're ignorant on the front page of their newspaper and try to get away with proving it. Mr. Ford, mm. would you please confine yourself to answering the question? Well, can you repeat the question? Who was Secretary of State under James Madison? Well, I can answer that at once. The answer is, I do not know. Off the record, Judge, you know the answer to that one. Off the record, no. And you got at least two college degrees. I have three university degrees. Well, it seems like a pretty silly way to measure intelligence. I can maybe save us all a little time here, gentlemen. As you know, I am one of the most successful manufacturers in this country. Folks drive my cars in every city in America, and they outnumber all the other types of cars by a big margin. I raise the wages of my workers to $5 per day. Ever heard of anybody else doing that? If I don't choose, to clutter up my brain with general facts and tidbits of historical knowledge. Well, I don't have to. As I have a row of electric buttons on my desk, I can push anyone and have at my elbow an expert in every branch of knowledge who are on my payroll. Does that sound ignorant to you? The witness is trying to take over this trial again, Your Honor. I move that he be found in contempt of this court. Motion denied, Mr. Jensen. I think we're about finished here. I am almost finished here, Judge. I want to ask one last question. Do you think an ignorant hick tripped in a junkyard and accidentally invented the internal combustion engine-powered automobile? <laughs> if you think that, I suggest you try making one at home from scratch. Then we'll compare it to my creation and see whose looks like it was made by an ignorant man and capable of thought. Through the assistance of his mastermind group, Henry Ford had at his command all the specialized knowledge he needed to enable him to become one of the most accomplished people in the world. The court finds in favor of the plaintiff, the Honorable Henry Ford. I drive one of your automobiles myself, Mr. Ford. Damn fine piece of machinery.